wants to take bets on how many of these I'm actually going to read. One, <laughs> three, maybe four? <laughs> Welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all good. Today we're going to be chatting about the 22 books I have, I have, I have, <laughs> I have to read before I turn 22. That's not happening. So I did this last year for turning 21 and it was so much fun. However, didn't do well on that. Didn't do well on that, but I think I did self-sabotage last year because I gave myself loads of classics. I was like, I'm going to read Little Women and Sherlock and Rebecca. I'm going to read all of the classics. You know, come on, Megan. We're not dumb. <laughs> but I did do that video in June. So I had like six months. My birthday's right at the end of January. Well, I don't know how many months I had, but I had a lot longer than I do to read 22 because it's September. I mean, honestly... <laughs> The girl did it to her damn self. It's probably not gonna happen, but a girl can dream. I'm not gonna have like any categories. There's not gonna be any rhyme or reason to how we go through this. I'm literally just gonna go through them in the order that I wrote them down. So kind of the order that I thought of them. We got a lot of mysteries on this list. Cause I feel like, you know, until my birthday, we've got September, October, November, December, January. I feel like it's kind of mystery season. So I'm really excited to read a lot of the mysteries on my TBR. So that's what a lot of this is. I would also say it's probably half 2021 new releases, half not, because they are what I'm most excited to read and like really want to read. So yeah, let's just get into it. So the first book on this list is The Spirit Engineer by AJ West. This is an arc I very kindly received of it. This comes out early October and I'm so excited. I'm so it's set in 1914 Belfast. It's two years after the Titanic sank and the kind of uh, spiritualism and occult and belief that you can contact spirits is rising in society. And there's this scientist who like doesn't believe any of it, but then I think throughout the course of the novel, he starts to believe in it. I think this is gonna be the perfect spooky book. I'm already in spooky vibes. The arc even has like gorgeous illustrations on the inside for all of the parts. And I'm just so excited. This is one of my like most anticipated releases of the kind of end of this year. I'm hoping I'm gonna love it. I I think this one I am gonna read soon. Pretty much none of the other books do I have plans to read in videos, so like, that's great. I need to think of some uh, some videos that can include these books. I am just so excited. I'm really, really excited to read this. And something that I am even more excited for, if that was possible, the author AJ West actually sent me over the book trailer, which is launching tonight. And I am so excited to show it to you guys and to watch it together. Showing a book trailer has always been one of those things that I've wanted to tick off my list. So I'm so excited it's finally happening. Okay, let me get it up. Oh my god. Oh my god, spooky season is here! <gasps> Look at these illustrations! Oh my gosh, I'm gonna cry. <gasps> oh my god! <gasps> Death is a beginning. <gasps> That was fucking scary. My heart's going pitter patter, pitter patter. I feel sick, like I could throw up. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, that scared me so much. Oh my god, I'm sorry if it scared you too. Oh my god, that scared me. Oh my god, that scared me. Oh my god. So tell me that doesn't make you so excited to read this. I'm gonna let you know what I think pretty soon. Hopefully, I'm gonna be reading it soon. Tell me that doesn't make you so excited to read this book. Oh my god, I'm so hyped. Next is another one of my most like anticipated, really want to read 2021 releases, and it is Switch by A.S. King. Now, this one had the best reviews. I think it's very weird. Like, it's super weird. But A.S. King, I either give five stars or two stars. Like, <laughs> I often say A.S. King's one of my favorite authors, 
but I either give her books five stars or two stars. There's like no in between really. This one is about a world where time has stopped and this girl lives in a house with a switch in it that her dad keeps building boxes and boxes around and she thinks maybe that she could do something with the switch. It's very strange. <laughs> uh, it's really short, so that's why it's so high up my list because I feel like it's something that's achievable for me to read. And I just kind of want to, I haven't read any weird books in the past couple months and I'm up for it. I'm up for like weird book season. I think this next book was the only book that I had on last year's list that I have decided to put on this again. There was a lot from that list I still haven't read, but I think I tried to like push myself with hard books, whereas this list is kind of like the books I actually am genuinely most, most, most excited to read. Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. Yes, this yes. is a concern and a worry. <laughs> I do really want to read this. I really want to read it. I think it's going to be perfect for October. I'm definitely, I'm going to read this in October. I'm saying it now. I'm committing now. I'm going to read it in October. If I don't, unsubscribe. No, please don't. Please don't unsubscribe. <laughs> All I know about this is that we have this woman falls in love with this man. She moves into his house and she's like haunted by the ghost of his ex-wife, Rebecca. And this is the only classic on this list. We're not, we're not, we, you know, we're not aiming high with the classics. I don't think I've even read a classic this year. Um, unless you count like Ag Agatha Christie and stuff. I suppose they're classics, but like I haven't read a classic classic. My mum owns like other Daphne du Maurier stuff as well. So if I enjoy this, I'll read some more of her books. I'm hoping to love it. I'm hoping with all hope that I'm gonna be obsessed. Next is one of my most anticipated ends of series. It's the end of a trilogy. I'm so excited. It is As Good As Dead by Holly Jackson. We love the spray edges first and foremost. Now, if you know me, you know that A Good Girl's Guide to Murder is one of, is my favorite YA mystery series. Like, I love it. I have already heard from people who have read this that it's like a killer. Like, it kills you. Like, it's an emotional roller coaster. And I'm not ready. So, we're following Pip, who is kind of like this amateur detective in her hometown. And in this one, I think Pip is going to be very, you know, she's gone on a very interesting journey. And I think she's going to be kind of very broken down by some of her previous cases. And I think it's going to deal a lot with like kind of her mental health and stuff. And it says on the back, she has a stalker, one who keeps asking who will look for you when you're the one who disappears. I am terrified. It's also quite long. It's a lot longer than the first two. I think it's over 500 yeah it's like 550 pages so it's a big boy but I am oh I'm just so I literally I just can't wait I'm hoping I'm gonna love it I'm hoping so hard I'm gonna love it another one I am so excited for and it has to be on this list because I have to read it by my birthday is The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont this oh <laughs> This book was written for me. You don't understand. She was written for me. She was written for me. So this is about Agatha Christie's disappearance. If you don't know, Agatha Christie disappeared for like, was it 11 days? It was quite a long time that she disappeared for. And no one knew where she went. And it kind of coincided with her finding out that her husband was having an affair. And this is about the disappearance written from the perspective of her husband's mistress. The drama. It's all the drama, Mick. I just love it. <laughs> it's all the drama, Mick. I just love it. We all know I'm a little bit of an Agatha Christie hire. I'm a little bit obsessed. I'm a little bit obsessed. So this mystery is like one of the books I'm most excited to read like in the world. I mean, all of these are, but I, I have to read this. Like I literally have to because I want to review it before it comes out. So I literally have to read it. I, I don't have a choice. <laughs> you can tell in my brain when I was writing this list, I was like, mystery, 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 <laughs> mystery. The next one is In the Hall with the Knife by Dona Peter Freund. So this is the start of another series. Don't come for me. Don't come for me. Do not discuss me starting the series. I don't want to talk about it. It's a lot of fantasies. And when I feel the fantasy, it is my reality. If I want to start them, I will. So this is inspired by Clue or Cluedo, hence my TBR game. It's set at this boarding school, it's YA. I think it's like quite young YA, but like all of our characters are named after the characters from, I call it Cluedo. I know you Americans call it Clue. I want to say Cluedo, so I'm going to say Cluedo. This is one of the books that I, like, I'm constantly thinking, how can I fit this into a TBR? I'm hoping I'm going to love it. I'm very excited. I keep saying I'm very excited. I hope I'm going to love it. 
find some new find some new vocabulary Megan <laughs> but then listen there is one book on this list that I'm gonna make progress in a series with and it is The Jeweled Moth by Catherine Woodfine this is the second in the Sinclair's Mysteries which is middle grade mysteries set like in the Edwardian period in the UK which is like kind of like the 1910s and they're set at this department store called Sinclair's basically and I really like the first one of these it's a super easy read you know just a fun middle grade mystery there's other middle grade mysteries I want to start so I want to like finish this series the next one I I don't know how I'm going to be successful at this but I'm hoping I'm going to read this in October is The King of Crows by Liver Braid. This is the final book in the Diviner series. I want it off my series list. I want it gone. I want it gone. I've been reading this series for like the longest time. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna be reading it anymore. So my ratings for the Diviners went four stars for the Diviners, like pretty much five stars for Lair of Dreams. And then I think like, I think Before the Devil Breaks You was like a 2.5, so. Petrified. <laughs> Petrified. I'm nervous for this. I haven't heard great things. This is like this kind of fantasy series set in 1920s New York where these people with the, called the Diviners have magical abilities, abilities basically. I can't speak. And this last one is kind of been building up to the ultra villain, the King of Crows. And we've kind of had parts of him in the other books, but it's going to all culminate in this one. The characters have all got to like have their storylines ended. I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I didn't like Before the Devil Breaks You, but I, I really want to love this and like I want the series to end on a high. It's very intimidating. It's 550 pages and it's like this big. So like I'm scared. So I keep putting it off, but I know I need to just finish this series off and like have it off my chest. So pray for me that I read it. Maybe I feel like in October. Next one is a bit of a wild card, but I really want to read Split Tooth by Tanya Tagak. I believe it's kind of told in this very unique and interesting way. I've heard it's a very heartbreaking book. I believe I heard it was semi-autobiographical, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't really want to know too much about the plot going into this because it's only, you know, two, well, not even 200 pages. It's super short and often there's, there's elements told in verse and stuff. So I don't really want to know too much, but this was a super popular book kind of last year and I really want to get around to reading it. Next we've got the only non-fiction on this list. I wasn't about to sabotage myself by putting loads of non-fiction in, but it is The Radium Girls by Kate Moore. So this is about the young women who um, kind of during the First World War were painting clocks and things, um, but they had to use radium. They used radium because uh, people didn't know the kind of negative effects of it. Um, and they would often kind of lick the paintbrush to get it precise, so they were licking, licking radium. But it left them all in the years to come with like crippling illnesses because it's poisonous. And so this is about them kind of fighting for justice for themselves. It's non-fiction about that. Yeah, this is another one. Oh, I bent the cover. <laughs> This is a super popular one and I know I have the audiobook for it as well so I'm hoping that I will read this pretty soon. Then we have A Lats Away by Darcy Little Badger. This is another one I didn't want to know too much before going into it. I believe this is about a young indigenous girl who I think can bring animals back to life and it's kind of like a a mystery. It's also that kind of book that kind of transcends age categories like you know some people say it's middle grade, some people say it's YA, some people say it's adult. I've heard it's got beautiful fantastical writing and it's just like one of the most beautiful books like I, I just love it so I am you know let's hope I read it. <laughs> Next, another book that's coming out in October of this year is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. I am so excited to read this. I loved House in the Cerulean Sea. It's probably one of my favourite books I've read so far this year. And I'm scared because I'm scared this won't live up to House in the Cerulean Sea. But I hope the writing is still as beautiful and as whimsical. Basically in this we're following a man who meets the Reaper and kind of has a chance to like reflect on his past life, like look back on his life. I've heard mixed mixed reviews of people who have read this already. Yeah, some people say it's like not as good but you're still gonna enjoy it which I will still be pleased with. I mean House in the Serenity Sea is hard to live up to so even if it kind of comes close I'll be happy. Next, why have I put so many series I want to, well not so many, but why have I put any series I want to start on this list? What do we have ladies? 
a fucking clown. We are a stupid bitch. We are a fucking clown. Another series I want to start is Hashtag Murder Trending by Gretchen McNeil. I own the third one of this, but it's not really like, you know, a chronological series. You can kind of read them out of order. It's kind of murder set in this dystopian world. So in this one, it's this society where deaths are live streamed, I believe, and like voted on. This series just sounds so interesting to me. It sounds kind of campy, kind of strange. Like, I, be it's got like tweets about all these people that they're like trying to vote on who to kill. So it's like X Factor meets murder, basically. Then I thought ahead, not just what I'm in the mood to read right now, but I was thinking, right, seasonally, what am I, what am I gonna be in the mood to read? Because I've got the mind of a mastermind, okay? See, I'm telling you, I have the mind of a master, master, I have the mind of a mastermind. And I thought, you know, it's going to be Christmas, it's going to be winter time. So I have put Midwinter Murder by Agatha Christie on this list. This is a selection of short winter murder stories, basically, from Agatha Christie. And I'm so excited. I meant to read this last winter. Similar to how I meant to read Rebecca last October and I didn't. This is one that I'm hoping to rectify not reading it last last winter because then when it's not winter anymore you don't really want to read it. And I think not only does it have to be winter, it has to be December. Like I have to read this in December. I'm going to read it in December. As someone who loves murder mysteries, I keep coming back to Agatha Christie's stuff because she's the queen of it. She's the OG. Everything we do now kind of started with her. Then another book that I've been so excited to read for such a long time is The Only Good Indians by Stephen Graham Jones. I feel like we're in kind of the right time of year again to read this. This is about uh, four friends who 10 years ago they shot an elk. Now a decade later these men are being stalked themselves, hunted. It's a horror book. It's like very much like about nature's revenge. And again this is a kind of a book that everyone loved last year. I've got a lot of those kind of books on my TBR where I got them because everyone loved them and then I haven't read them. This one, kind of like In the Hall with a Knife, is one of the books I look at on my book cart the most and think, oh my god, I can't wait to read you. It's definitely up there for me, so hopefully I will get to it before I turn 22. Another kind of mystery um, that came out in 2021 that I really want to get to is Girl in the Walls by AJ Ganise. I was super excited for this at the start of the year and then uni happened and I wasn't reading as much. I think I would have read this at the start of the year had uni not been a thing. I don't want to hear any goddamn excuses anymore. But this is about this girl who lives in the walls. I think this new family have moved into the home but a girl is living in the walls. This is one of my favorite covers books that I own. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. There's something about it that I think this is gonna be a five star. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I feel like I can just feel it that it's gonna be a five star. And I think this is actually a good book to read towards the end of the year. I'm hoping it's gonna have spooky, gothic, mysterious vibes. So I'm so excited. Ah, oh my God. This is, I've rejuvenated my excitement for this by speaking about it to you. <laughs> now one that I am super excited to read pretty much like off the cover is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. This is such a gorgeous edition. This is the Fairy Loot edition. I mean, come on now, come on. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. Now come on now. I'm just obsessed with it. I really don't know anything about it. Like I could not tell you the plot. Um, I, I couldn't tell you anything, but I wanna read it. <laughs> I don't have a lot of fantasy on this list and I feel like I've really been slacking with my fantasy like in the last couple months. I have not been reading as much. Like how did it go from my most read genre to me not reading it? I really, I don't know. Then another one of the books I was most excited to come out this year and I bought it and I have not read it yet is Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. This is by an indigenous author and it's about this girl who is half indigenous. So I think her dad was indigenous and her mother is French. She witnesses this murder and agrees to kind of get caught up in this FBI operation to um, stop like drug related deaths. I've just heard so many amazing things about it. I've heard not only is it this mystery, but it's also like this beautiful and very hard, heartbreaking book. I think there's a lot of trigger warnings for this, but I've heard just how, you know, raw and heartbreaking it is. And like, I like to read sad stuff all year round, but especially at the end of the year and in like January. <laughs> and then another mystery that came out this year. <laughs> Can you sense a theme? 
Nothing new, nothing changed, same old shit. Is Dead Dead Girls by Nikiza Afia. This is set in 1920s Harlem and young black women keep going missing. And so this woman kind of takes it upon herself to investigate and um, to figure it out basically. And I've heard it's actually a lot darker than the cover appears. The cover kind of looks like cozy mystery vibes, but I've heard it's a lot darker than it actually appears. And I've heard really good things from people who have read this. So this, like when I bought it, number one book to read. Have I read it? No. So <laughs> then another kind of book that I have owned for a long time and really want to get to is The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. What I remember about this is that this woman is like having to go underwater on this like mission and the only person that she has contact with is the person in her ear kind of giving her instructions and you really don't know who you can trust. It's very like atmospheric, very creepy. Like on the back it says M, who's the woman in the ear, sees nothing wrong with controlling Gaia's, who's the woman doing the expedition, Gaia's body with drugs or withholding critical information to ensure the smooth operation of her expedition. So it, I'm scared. Then another series I want to make progress in is Across the Green Grass Fields by Sean and Maguire. This is the Wayward Children series, super short, so it shouldn't be hard. I think this one is about a girl who loves horses or something, and it's a world of centaurs. Um, I believe this is one of the books in the series that you can read without having read the rest, because a lot of the others are linked, even though they follow different characters. This series is like a five star series for me. I absolutely adore it. I love Sean and Maguire. Sean and Maguire is like my favourite author. This is going to be five stars. I already know it, I just need to get around to reading it. And then the only like contemporary on this list, I really should have read this like a lot sooner because it came out um, in June, I think, or June or July, is Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Suguria. This is just like a fun fake dating contemporary YA romance. I really like This Time Will Be Different by Misa Suguria. So I'm really hoping that this is gonna be like a really fun kind of palette cleanser book. Yeah, I'm excited to read all of Misa Suguria stuff. So putting on this on this list is like, making me read it hopefully. So there we have it, that is the 22 books I want to read before I turn 22 at the end of January next year. How do we think I'm gonna do? I think I might, I think I'll definitely hit 10. I believe in myself, I feel like I'm definitely gonna read at least 10, but more than that is questionable, like I don't know. <laughs> Let me know which of these you have read and loved. I would absolutely love to know. Please, please let me know which ones you've loved and let me know which ones you're most excited for me to read and like hear me review. If you've gotten to the end of this video, comment any emoji to do with like under the sea, maybe like a fish emoji or something like that. And thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. I appreciate everything you do for me and I'll see you very, very soon. Bye.